Friend, you now live in the reality of the Jubilee. You may not know it. You may not know how to tap into it, but it's legally yours. It has your name on it. It's in the bank vault. It's all yours, the whole kingdom. We got to talk about it. So let's go on and read Isaiah 61. Because God's serious about this. I mean, he kept making points to us. (laughs) We got to get this. All right, so verse number two. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. God does not like the devil controlling what he gave to man. Jesus brought salvation, but he also brought vengeance to make it right. To return back to mankind everything Adam gave away. To give back to you the authority that was lost. To give back to you the provision that was lost. To give back to you every aspect of the kingdom that Adam lost. Vengeance. Jesus brought the government of God to bear in Satan's domain. Jesus carried the kingdom, the anointing, the authority of the kingdom into his domain. That's what Isaiah 9 says, unto us a child is born. Remember, unto us a child is born. The government will be on his shoulders of the increase will never end. And never end, that means you. That government is still expanding, tearing down Satan's strongholds. Because God is still in the vengeance business. Vengeance simply meaning he wants to make it right. He wants to right it, make it right, okay? Then after that he says, Day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Now I understand, I've heard... I mean, obviously, there's so many ways you can read this scripture. It pertains to so many things the devil does to people. Sickness, disease, all of those things. They're all included in this covenant. But if you start the whole paragraph, he's talking about preaching good news to the poor. To comfort all who mourn and provide for those, provide for those who grieve in Zion. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. An oak is a pretty sturdy tree. These are no longer nomads, friend. They're planting some pretty deep roots. They're taking territory and holding on to it. They're no longer nomads in tents out there in the wilderness. They're settling and taking territory from the devil. They're holding it. Now listen to verse 4. They will rebuild the ancient ruins. Now it's no longer about just having that release from the grief, uh, the personal healing. It's now about taking territory. Do you see how it shifts? It shifts into taking territory. It's not about let's heal them from what hurt them and the mourning and the grieving and put on a garment of praise. The whole thing shifts after he says this is the Jubilee to building, to occupying. He says they'll rebuild the ancient ruins, restore the places long devastated. The Hebrew word means desolation. They're going to restore the desolate places, renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Aliens, now catch this, aliens will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and vineyards. They're called employees today. (laughs) And you'll be called priest of the Lord. You'll be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations. That means money's coming your direction. I'm not making it, it's what it says right there, is it not? And in the riches you will boast, instead of their shame, my people will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, they'll rejoice in their inheritance. And so they'll inherit a double portion in their land. Everlasting joy will be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and iniquity. In my faithfulness, I'll reward them and make an everlasting covenant with them. That's you. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge they are a people the Lord has blessed. Did you see the shift? The Jubilee is about occupying, taking territory. The land's given back. 
You're no longer a slave, you're an owner. Let me say it again. You're no longer a slave, you're an owner. Which means any profit you make, you get to keep. So how much do you want to make? All right. We can see here that when Isaiah was talking, he's talking about a way of life that is just totally foreign to a slave. I mean, you have to shake your head and go, did I read that right? Is that possible? Right. Feed on nations. Nations will call you blessed. Building houses, building cities, taking territory, expanding, putting the stake down for the kingdom of God. People are all benefiting by these cities being built. People's lives are being changed. The kingdom of righteousness is moving forward. People are finding peace. There's provision. There's safety. There, it just, it's taking over. Do you see that? It's building. It's taking territory. People are free to be on assignment. They're called priests and ministers of our God. Listen, in the uh, Leviticus chapter 25, when it talks about this uh, year of jubilee, the 50th year, it says, verse 11 and 12. The 50th year shall be a jubilee for you. In it you shall not sow or reap and store what grows of itself or gather the grapes of the uncultivated vines. So you're not to reap and store even what grew by itself. Now catch this. You see, they can't sow, right? But it adds, you see it adds that? It says, okay, you can't sow your crops, but now you can't even gather what grows by itself. And it goes on in the, uh, the uh, NIV version. It says, for it is a jubilee and is to be holy for you. Eat only what is taken directly from the field. Meaning that you can't even gather. So, you know, if you didn't plant the fields, there's going to be some stuff growing, right? The seeds self-pollinate and start growing, germinate and all that. And so you could go out and start gathering, just like you did in the other system, start gathering and hoarding and trying to make, it way, make a way. He says, no, you can't do that. You can only take it directly from the field when you need it. So I want you to say this out loud. Gather. gather. You are in the gathering part of life. In this position you're in, in, the, in this jubilee that Jesus gave us, you are, I'm going to say this, I, I, help me, Holy Spirit, get this out right. You are the, not the doer, but the gatherer. Now, when I say not the doer, I'm not saying take a 25-year vacation and just go park somewhere. I'm talking about you're not responsible to make your life happen in the sense of I'm going to give painful toil and sweat just to survive. You are gathering on assignment for the kingdom. You take only what is available. You take it, you don't store it. Again, this is a picture. Okay, this is a picture, right? Right? This is a picture of the reality you have. You are now a gatherer, but most people do not think in terms of gathering. When they think in terms of finding provision, they think in terms of doing. They grit their teeth and think, I'll do something. I will do something. We can grit our teeth and make it happen. You don't have to do that. All you need is a God-given direction and idea to gather. You've got to change how you think to tap into this way of life. See, many of you have moved into the Sabbath day. You're prospering now. Some of you have moved on past that, and you're out of debt. You come to that level. Now, the next level is you've got to come into a place of occupation, Territory, expansion, employees, ministering on behalf of the kingdom to, to the city, to the country, to the city, to the nation, this state. You're going to influence peoples, not just your household. Now you are rebuilding cities and governments, and you are influencing school boards, and you are you, now you're prospering for the whole different level of prosperity with a whole different purpose. It's not to pay your car off. It's not to pay your house off. It's how much I can influence in this earth realm for the kingdom of God. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.